Al-Qaeda? That's the guy who created the Muslim chaplain program for DOD. That's Al-Qaeda. This is a guy who was an ambassador, a uh, uh, goodwill ambassador for the State Department. I'm not talking about that. And who's, who is clearing, certifying Muslim chaplains for the Bureau of Prisons and for the DOD today? ISNA. That's Hamas. The problem of uh, infiltration is not just a left-wing problem in the U.S. or a right-wing problem. It's on both sides of politics. And uh, although the grassroots of people across the U.S. are deeply concerned, uh, the reality is that the elites are shutting down. Their language is increasingly being censored. I'm in Australia, and we have a, a more freedom to talk about these issues, to talk about theology, to acknowledge the, the ideological roots of the hatred and the violence that, that comes up. But the US actually speech has been being more and more truncated and uh, journalists have less courage now than they had. And uh, people on both sides are being intimidated. So it's a worry. Now the problem is ordinary people don't buy that. They, they know there's a problem and they want to be informed. And there's a, 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 a kind of gap emerging between the elites and what ordinary people want to know and they want to be informed. And that's a that's a big challenge, a big challenge for the U.S. at this time. And they say what bothers me is the fact that the press is not digging these facts out, but is buying into the politically correct narrative and just sort of accepting the fact that, well, we're haters. By the way, I have Muslims in my family. We have discussions about these issues all the time. We're not killing each other, and I certainly love them. Uh, so this idea that to, to even have a discussion is to suggest that you are out to get people, that you hate people, is just, it's just really silly, but, uh, but it's very serious in the sense that it really attempts to shut down a very, very important debate that we need to be having in this country. So I would just challenge the press, get these facts. Are they true or are they not? And if they are, why aren't they being published rather than <coughs> sort of adhering to political correctness? And I do challenge you, if you look uh, in the last six months, you've had uh, a good half dozen or more members of Congress, Grill, the FBI director, the Attorney General, Secretary Napolitano. I mean, uh, one of the hearings, I guess about three months ago, Texas Congressman uh, Louie Gomer, uh, Grill, the FBI director, and he held up a stack of documents that were financial documents that demonstrated that ISNA and NATE funded directly Hamas entities, and which is why the judge ruled, which is why they were on the unindicted co-conspirator list in the HLF trial. It's evidence, it's fact. And the fact that they come and they smile to your face and tell you, oh, that's, that's, that was 20 years ago, that's not. Well, the conviction for HLF was three years ago. And according to the appellate court, that those facts are still in evidence and they still, uh, they're, they're still real because they're not removing these groups from the unindicted co-conspirator list. Because there's a massive amount of evi evidence and truth, facts that demonstrate this. And that, that is the question is, why are we seeing across the board uh, people in the media not digging into this and just asking the questions. That's all we're asking for. Sharia law forbids criticism of Islam and uh, what you're seeing is uh, Sharia by stealth. So the public discourse shows more and more of the required characteristics of Islamic, Islamically correct speech. It's being done in the name of tolerance, it's being done by secular people, uh, often with uh, the radical uh, Muslims in the background. Uh, but it's a tragedy for this nation. It's, uh, it's very, very sad and disappointing to see that the, the manifestations, the characteristics of a Sharia compliant society coming to influence and shape the mainstream of American public discourse. And may, may I share one anecdote? We do a three day program uh, where we train law enforcement, military, National Guard. We ran one at headquarters Marine Corps just a few months ago. We had an agent, FBI agent, stand up supervisor stood up in the morning of day three and say, I've been an FBI agent for over 14 years. I work at FBI headquarters. I work in the counterterrorism division, and I've never heard what you all have put out the first two days. And everyone in the room, and these were people from all the federal agencies, local state agencies, they'd never heard the information, but they all knew it was true because we walked them down that line. That's how we get here. When you have the leadership of DOJ, FBI, DHS, taking that kind of training and not allowing it on the inside, and just in the last 10 days, directives that people inside the agencies who do teach it are now being